We're going to make cherry flavored candy canes and pillows. Okay. So we're going to start out with, we're going to do four colors here. We're going to do a little bit of red. We're going to do a little bit of green and a little bit of pink. And then, of course, a lot of white. Because the white will be the, both the uh, center of the candy cane, also the biggest portion of it. So that means the candy cane is all white in the center, and the striping just goes on the outside edge to give us our ornate color. It makes you feel like a candy cane. <laughs> now, this is the same recipe we've been using here at Logan since 1933. Same recipe, same marble slab, same hook on the wall, same stove, same heater. I've not been here quite that long. I got here this morning at about 9.45. <laughs> Running a little late this morning. But we were working late last night, so. We're going to separate a little bit off here. If we can mix our first color, we're going to start out with red. We need a little bit of a red stripe, then we'll do our green next. We try to do the darker colors first. And then last but not least, we'll do the white part, and I'll show you how we're going to put the flavor in it. So I've separated just a little bit out here. I also do haircuts if anybody needs a trim. I'm thinking about doing the haircut for sure. I'll only do one look. It's a ball look for me. That's all can I want to do. So. Can you? I can absolutely can. Thank you. <laughs> Long hair's in now. I know. Well, the curly hair too. Yeah. Like the, Especially for the guys. I know. They're, and people are actually getting perked. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's the like the early 80s all over. <laughs> all right. So we're going to add a little bit of color to it here. We're going to add our red coloring first. I guess we like to start with the darker colors first. No flavor whatsoever, this is just the color only. I'm good. Are you sure? Thank you very much. What do you think? Yeah, we have plenty of space we can share. So I'm good. And we're just going to fold this in here for a couple of minutes until we get the color all mixed in. Okay. Now, Logan's been in downtown Ontario since 1933. Originally, we were out on Euclid Avenue, about two blocks north of here, on the west side of Euclid, just north of the Pagoda Theater. We moved down to this location here in 1953. And then about 20 years ago, we opened up over on that side, and about five years ago on that side over there, trying to give you guys a little more room, and probably also so we can sell a few more items. Now this recipe here can be candy cane or ribbon candy. It is the identical recipe. And at this point, until we get to the table, we can make a decision which way we're gonna go. And the only difference is once we get to the table, that's where we have to shape it a little bit different or pull out candy canes or ribbon candy. So you can't do both in each batch, you have to do one or the other, but it is the exact same recipe. Now Christmas season is our biggest ribbon candy season. Last year we had 27 different flavors of ribbon candy. This year we're hoping to have at least 28, maybe 29 flavors. We actually already added one new flavor, which was blueberry cheesecake. Very tasty flavor. Now we make ribbon candy all year long, although we only make about nine or 10 different flavors through most of the year. Right now we're up to 13. I've got a few different flavors you'll be able to take a look at when we get over to the table here in a few minutes. And hopefully by the middle of November, we should have all 27, 27 or 28 flavors available. We're gonna have to come back. Which is not that far away now, right? So those gears flying by. Now at Christmas time, we make our candy canes in four different flavors. We do the traditional red and white peppermint, which is by far our number one selling candy cane of the Christmas season. Traditional red and white peppermint, I'm sorry, traditional red and white color with a traditional peppermint flavor. We also do a, uh, a cinnamon flavored candy cane, which is the red, white, and green, like you see right there. Take away the big red stripe, we make it green so we can tell those are cinnamon flavor. We also do a cherry flavored candy cane that is burgundy with a green and white stripe. I don't have a sample to show you that one, but you have to take my word for it. It is a very tasty flavor. Okay, you guys are going to get to taste cherry here in just a few minutes. And then we also have our root beer flavored cane, which is orange, yellow, and brown. There, we try to carry that one. Pretty much all the way through the Christmas season if possible also. Very tasty yeah. flavor. Yeah. Alright, I've got the red just about mixed in here now, so I'm going to take this over the heater. And one of the girls will come out of the back and keep it nice and warm for us. So there's our red all mixed in. I'm going to take it right over here and hopefully one of the girls will come keep it warm for us. That's their hips, that they're not getting it, so. <laughs> just like a normal nobody really listens, I'm just kidding. 
And next, we're going to cut out our stripes. So we're going to add a little bit of green. We do our green striping. Okay. Remember, the bulk of this is going to be the white part, which will also be the flavored part of the candy cane. Okay. So we're going to add a little color here now. Start out with a little green coloring here. Once again, no flavor whatsoever. This is just the color only. And we're just going to mix that in just like we did the red a minute ago. Now the reason I keep stacking this up is it does get cold on the outside edge quicker. We do want to cool it, but we also want to cool it evenly. We don't want it to get too cold, too fast, and too many spots. So by piling it up on itself, we just keep it all the same temperature and it gets to cool nice and even. That way when we get to the table, we start to pull it out, it'll pull out nice and even. Gonna get this green mixed in here now. The next we're gonna do our pink stripe. And then we'll add some flavor to it. What do you think, Bernie's pretty cool. Now let's see, for Valentine's Day we made candy canes that are heart shaped. Last year we did it in five different flavors. Peppermint, uh, cinnamon, cherry, watermelon, and I believe pink lemonade. And then for, speaking of green, for St. Patty's Day, we do candy canes that are green and white. Not only a traditional candy cane shape, but also in the shape of the three-leaf clover. Those are green apple flavored candy canes, very tasty flavor. All right, I got my green just about mixed in here now also. All right, looks pretty good to me. So let's take the green over the table. I'm going to keep that one nice and warm for us also. And then last but not least, we're going to do our pink stripe here. And then we're going to show you how we're going to turn this white and also add a little flavor to it here. Once again, we're going to add that color. No flavor whatsoever, just the color only. And add that pink coloring. Just like that. And we're gonna mix that in here a little bit. Just like we did the green and the red. Let's see, where were we talked about St. Patty's Day? We also do candy canes for the Easter or springtime. We do a pastel colored candy canes. Last year we did them about four or five different flavors. We do an oval egg shape, candy cane bunny heads, candy cane butterflies, and even candy cane Easter baskets. Very tasty flavors. We also make ribbon candy at Easter time as a pastel color. We do that watermelon flavor, and that one we call the Wacky Wabbit Watermelon Ribbon. <laughs> yeah, that three times really fast, right? All right, so I'm just trying to get the pink mixed in here now. Then we'll start to work on the bigger piece here, show how we're going to turn it white, and also add the flavor to it. Let's see, we talked about Easter time. Also for Mother's Day, we do candy canes in heart shape, butterflies and baskets. For Father's Day, we can't forget dads. We also do our root beer flavored canes, because we all know dads love root beer. For Fourth of July, we make them in what colors? Red, white, Red, white and blue. For Fourth of July, we're hoping to mix them next week because we get closer to Veterans Day here. We also be peppermint flavored candy canes. All right, so I've got my pink all mixed in here now, so I'll take that over the heater. We'll keep that one nice and warm over here also. Then I'm going to do a quick glove change here. Then we're going to add a little flavor to it. Now remember what I poured on the table just a couple minutes ago. It was a little bit over 320 degrees. It has cooled down quite a bit now, but it's still incredibly warm. Let's take our little thermometer here and get a reading and see where we stand. We are still at 192 degrees right there, so it's still incredibly warm right there. 192 right there. You guys see that? 192 degrees. 842 degrees. You can see it from there? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to add a little flavor to it. We're going to add our cherry flavor. 
I'm going to add about a third of an ounce here. A little less than a half ounce, a little more than a quarter ounce. Just like that. And then we're going to mix that all in, just like we did the colors. And then we'll show you how we're going to turn this nice and white. Now when we turn this white here, we do turn it white all naturally. You'll see in just a couple minutes here how that all comes together here. We're not going to add any color to it at all to make it turn white. Part of the job where I feel very needed. <laughs> Is it too hot to put the flavoring in before that? Oh, well, if you put it, yeah, you don't want to put it in, it'll just mostly burn off. Or if you put it when you're cooking, a lot of it will cook off also. That's why you have All right, so watch here. The it does happen rather here. quickly. Keep your eye on the big blob up here. Not me, the big blob up top here. <laughs> here we go. We're going to roll it out here. Here we go. Rolling, rolling. And there it is, you guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for your coming. Although we do want you to know here at Logan's, we put a little bit of love into every batch of candy we make. You're going to probably okay. smell that cherry here in just a minute. I see a little bit spilled out there. It's going to be coming over the top of the window there any minute. <laughs> So we do put a little bit of love in every batch of candy we make, just to show you how we roll here. Here's our heart of the slap for you guys. So show a little love in candy man. Let's do it up there. Woo! Thank you. All right, let's get serious here now. Let's show you how we're going to turn it nice and white. And then we'll put the candy canes together for you here, so. Can you smell the flavor out there now? Can you guys smell it? Uh, pretty delicious. I'm going to add just a touch more flavor here real quick. Yeah, I smell it. Yeah. Just like that. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, let's put this on the hook here and show you how we're going to turn it nice and white here. All right, we're doing a couple things here on the hook. Actually, I'm going to go back to the table here and see if I can pick up some more of this uh, flavor here. I see a little bit more flavor on the table here. So let's just see if we can pick that up here real quick. It took a minute, but man. Did you see that hook? It's pretty cool. Take a picture of that hook. Alright, let's put it back up hook here. See if we can turn it nice and white. So we're gonna do a couple things here on the hook. Number one, we're adding a little bit of air to it. Also the stretching of the sugar crystal. And that's what causes the candy cane to turn nice and white. Very similar to how you might whip egg whites at home or how when you uh, stretch out a rubber band, how the color lines up a little bit. You can see with each and every fold, the color gets a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. Good. Now remember the whole batch is 20 pounds total weight. I've got about 16 or 15 pounds on the hook here with the white part of the cane. It's about a pound and a half to two pounds a piece between each of the colors over there. She's keeping it nice and warm for us. So this is what we call Jerry's Gym, also known as my holiday health spa. That way I'm not going to the gym this time of year. Yeah, I confess, I don't go to the gym any time of year. This is the one we're going to get right here. This is it. <laughs> Although I do drive by the gym a lot, because my favorite donut right shop right. is right next door to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the donuts. I think that's called job security, right? A donut shop next to the gym. That's not unlike having a, a, a dentist across the street from a candy store. It's called job security. Let's see if I can get just a little more of this flavor off the table here. So we'll put it back on the hook here.
Now I don't count how many times we pull, we just keep pulling until we get a nice bright white. Every batch is slightly different. Some batches start out lighter, some start out darker, depending on how it cooks up. Every batch is a little bit different. And depending on the flavor of the candy cane, the color and the size of the candy cane we're making, that'll determine how long we pull it or how white we want it to be. Now, how many of you guys saw the movie Tangle? Anybody see that movie? Yes. Doesn't that kind of look like Rapunzel's hair there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're pretty sure the people that made the graphics on those movies came down here when they were kids and watched us make the candy canes. That's where they came up with an idea. So we had our attorneys contact them and ask for a mere 1% of the proceeds. <laughs> Got no response whatsoever. But it can't hurt to ask, right? <laughs> then you'll notice as it gets lighter and lighter, it kind of starts to look like Elsa's hair from Frozen. We all know that movie made close to a billion dollars. So of course we had our attorneys contact them. In this case, we only asked for half a percent. <laughs> Once again, got no response at all. As my wife Susie keeps telling me, Jerry, you just have to let it go. <laughs> all right, we're, we're done here. Let's go, guys. Come on inside. We're gonna move over to the table here. You guys want to scoot down this way? We're gonna put it all together from here on the table, and we'll show you how we're gonna pull out our candy cakes. No, you can scoot back. Come on, listen. Yeah. 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 Here, 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 now that is kind of our trademark here, Logan's. All our Christmas colored candy canes start out with that same stripe pattern, five little stripes and one big stripe. Now we're not doing that today, but we're gonna to do a little bit different stripe pattern, but if I were gonna do that, I take my block here, I put a series of five red and white stripes on the top of the block. Then on the opposite side, I have my big solid red stripe, and that's how we get that barber pole look to it. But today we're just gonna do three stripes, one big red stripe, one big green stripe. You can see it kind of stretching out there. And last but not least, we're gonna do one big pink stripe. So we're gonna stretch it out there. And it's still probably in excess of 185 degrees or so. So we're gonna take our big giant block here. Thank you, Evan. We're gonna add our stripes right to the block here. We're gonna start out with our red stripe. We're gonna stretch it out, kind of stick it to the side of the block there, just like so. Then on the other side here, we're going to take our green stripe, stretch him out here. Leave a little bit of room for some white in there. And then last but not least, on our third side here, we're going to put our pink stripe. We're going to put that right there, leave a little bit of room for some white on each side there. Also, just like that. So now, as you can see here on this side here, I've got my green and red stripe on this side right here. On this side here, we have our big pink stripe. Any bowlers out there? Anybody bowl? <laughs> they got down the so you can knock that down. How about any baseball fans? Have you watched the World Series? Yes, yes I'm a Dodger fan, I have to admit that, but uh, how about a nice little candy cane baseball bat or softball bat? With Thanksgiving coming up, how about a big giant turkey leg? My favorite holiday of the year, can't wait. Now use your imagination, if I had five stripes there, I'd tell you I used to blend a little bit of and sing out very friendly. <laughs> Well, the stripes here, but how about this one? A big giant fish and a whale like with a candy cane tail. Of course, it just looks like a big giant candy cane to me there. We're going to stretch this out. We're going to cut that off. The reason we cut that off is we don't want to have to fight to get a nice stripe there in the beginning. So by pulling it out there, we can go right into a nice stripe. But we don't want to waste that, so we're going to do a lot of what I like to call stuff on the turkey. A little practice for Thanksgiving here. I'm going to open the back end of this up a little bit. We're going to put that right there and we'll pull that off towards the end of the batch right there. Just like that. So now if you guys will watch here very carefully, I'm going to begin to pull this out here. Give it a little tug. Give it a little pull. Give it a little stretch. When we get it just the right length and thickness, we're going to give it a little twist. And right before your very eyes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have created the candy cane. Now, Abby's going to break out one of the few machines we use here at Logan's. This press right here is about 95 to 100 years old. We've been using the same press here at Logan's since 1933. 
Abby likes to call it the crush up. Sure, oh, wow. Then voila, we have some samples. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See if she can do that again. It might have been beginner's yes. luck. She has been doing this for well, close to 24 years. So. Now wait right there, we're gonna bring everybody out a nice warm sample. Remember they are slightly warm, but they are certainly not hot. So don't be afraid when she comes by. She puts her hand on like that, she's gonna drop it right in the palm of your hand. Feel free to put it right in your mouth. Just don't bite right down and just kind of beat it like you would a jawbreaker. So wait right there, you guys, and we'll bring everybody out a nice warm sample. For the smaller kids, you can do the double cup. So drop it right in there, palm of your hands. Feel free to put it right in your mouth. And enjoy Logan's cherry flavored candy cane. Are you going to make any that are actually shaped like a candy cane? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Bring it some home to Texas. What do you guys think? How's that taste out there? Is that pretty good? Is that nice and tasty when oh, it's nice and warm? Oh, wow. It's so warm. It's so mm. warm. Now we make our candy canes here in Logan's. I have a little pencil here that we use as a little stick. Looks like a pencil, but it's actually a little stick that we've been using for close to 70 years or better, probably at least, that I know of. What we do is we're going to pull it out a little bit. We're going to cut it the length of the stick there. Abby will give it a quick roll. Then she'll shape or bend the candy cane or hook the candy cane, making her the candy cane bender. And voila, just like that, we have a Logan's candy cane. Now that is the smallest size candy cane that we make here at It's also our most popular size. And if we were to make just that size right here throughout the entire batch, by the time we're done, we'd fill up this entire table, stack them down at that end over there, row after row after row. Fill the tables right about here by me. If we make just this size only, we make pretty close to 400 candy canes this size out of this one batch. Oh wow. Now we do this candy cane demonstration well over 250 times throughout October, November, December. And by December 24th, we'll have made pretty close to 100,000 candy canes one by one, just like you're watching right now. Wow! wow. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. So. Now, as you can see, we work kind of in an assembly line here. I work here in position number one. I pull the candy cane, making me, of course, the candy cane puller. Abby was doing actually three jobs. First off, she'll crush the candy cane, making her the candy cane crusher. She also rolls the candy canes when we need to, making her the candy cane roller. She'll also hook her bit the candy cane, making her the candy cane shaper. Careful now. And then down the end, someone will stack the candy canes, making them the candy cane stacker. <coughs> Excuse me. Soon somebody will come out of the back room to back the candy canes, making them, of course, the candy cane bagger. And if it happens to be our oldest employee, who happens to be my mother-in-law, I'd have to give her the title of the old bagger. That's the title, I would never call my mother law that, but luckily she's not here, she'd probably hit me with that big solid frying pan. She loves to cook everything in, right? Finally, Now I'm not sure if you guys noticed this big giant candy cane on the wall over behind me. Yes, that is a real candy cane. Not only is that an incredibly large candy cane, it is actually the world's largest 100% handmade candy cane. That candy cane is over 36 pounds in weight. It is over 16 feet long. In fact, this uh, coming December 24th, it's going to be 27 years old this year. But I'll tell you what, you guys have been very patient this afternoon. So in just a couple minutes there, we're going to break out the ladder. And then for a dollar each, we'll let you guys climb that ladder, take a look at it, and make sure it's still good. <laughs> no, I'm just checking. No, we wouldn't do that to you, just kidding. Now also, I'm not sure if you guys know the story and the history behind the candy cane. We'd certainly love to share that story with you also. You know, most people think the candy cane is just an insignificant piece of Christmas candy, but actually the gentleman who invented the candy cane in the United States, sometime around the mid-1800s, he was trying to come up with a single piece of candy that would tell the entire Christmas story, all in that one candy. Well, he came up with a candy cane. If you take any one of our candy canes any size and you hold it up in the traditional shape, you'll notice that it looks kind of like the shepherd's staff, which is does a remind us that Jesus has the good shepherd. If you take that same candy cane and turn it upside down, and now it becomes the letter J. Of course, the letter J standing for Jesus. Because as you guys know, the true meaning and celebration of Christmas is actually the celebration of the birth of Christ. Now, everything in the candy cane has a meaning, all the way from the white part of the cane, standing for the purity of Christ, the red, the blood of Christ. The stripes he took on the cross for us, the hardness of the cane, the flavor, the shape, everything has a meaning. And now you know the story behind the candy cane. Now, where along the line the, candy, the ribbon candy came into play, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we've been making ribbon candy here the same way since 1933. Even though it is the same recipe, it is a little bit different shape from the way we pull it out thin. 
So some people prefer the ribbon candy, some prefer the pillows or the candy canes. I recommend just whatever we're making when it's nice and warm, that's the best way to get it. So that's the best way to eat it, I would say. It tastes so much better warm. You're not lying. Yeah, thank you, I like you. Now in just a minute here, we're gonna give you guys a chance if you'd like to, to shape or bend your own candy cane. I believe there was a couple of you guys who might have bought tickets online. Okay, and then those of you that don't, in just a minute, we'll let Rep tell you how you can get a ticket. Uh, you do not have to bend the candy cane if you don't want to, but if you'd like to, we'd love to have you give it a try. So what we're gonna do in just a minute, we're gonna exchange that ticket for a warm candy cane. Now two things, number one, you only have 15 to 20 seconds, so that means two things. Number one, you wanna shape the candy cane very slowly, but you also must shape it right away. You can make whatever shape you might want. You can make a circle, you can make a J, you can make an S. You can roll around your finger, make a little bit of a curly cue. Kind of a spring lift to it there. Or you can also make a candy cane heart, which seems to be the shape of choice. Okay, so if you guys want to make a heart, I just take up the ends and I make it look like a U shape. And then I squeeze the bottom to make it look like the letter B. And then I just take the tops and I curve them around to make the little arches in the heart. And then I squish it together in the center to make it stick. And just like that, you've made yourself a candy cane. Oh, wow. <laughs> so remember, you can make whatever shape you might want. You can make a circle with an A&S. Shape it very slowly, but shape it right away. Just remember, if you do decide to make a heart and you drop it and break it, you'll end up with a broken heart. We don't want that here in Logan. So <laughs> we are breaking what I'm talking about out there. So, so if you guys don't mind, come down to the end here. You guys want the tickets. If you don't have a ticket, you can work your way over to the register if you'd like to. Purchase a ticket to shape a cane. Or if you haven't checked in yet and you did buy a ticket online, you, you can also head over to the uh, store over there or the uh, register and uh, they'll check you in and get your tickets. So you certainly don't have to do it, but if you'd like to, it's kind of fun to do. You can eat it, uh, it, no, it but I'll watch you. whatever you want to do. Also, if anybody has any additional questions, you guys, feel free to ask away. I would gladly answer any question you might have. Sometimes somebody will ask me the question, where did I learn how to make the candy canes? You guys may have heard of the school I went to. I went to a school called NTU. That would be North Pole University, kind of a heavy set guy to be run off into one beer top and everything I know. Just kidding. I actually worked there for eight years under three different owners. I learned the trade right here on this very table here. Uh, me and my wife Susan have owned the store for 40 years, just October 10th. Uh, began our 40th year of owning the store in Logan. I've actually worked here for 48, almost 49 years now, and yet I'm only 29 years old. So. Thank you for not laughing. So you are Logan. Yes. Uh, yes. You can call me Logan, sure. 